everyone, it is Danny, and welcome to this evening update. I trust and hope that you're doing really fantastic and we're gonna be talking about our active systems out there. So looking at this graphic, here we can see that we've got three areas to talk about. We've got newly formed Philippe. So Tropical Storm Philippe was previously known as Tropical Depression 17 and Invest 90L. So it has now reached that threshold to be classified as a tropical storm. We'll be talking about that and take a look off the African coast that tropical wave which is now marked so in yesterday's evening update i mentioned the fact that uh, we would see nhc highlights in the area either later on the day which would be yesterday evening or through the weekend and today here we've got this area to watch and then there's also ophelia which had made landfall earlier today so we'll be talking about the latest on it as well so going on to these satellite imagery and we can see that there's a lot happening there we've got ophelia up there in parts of the eastern states there we see a lot of activity down in sections of the bahamas and the northern Caribbean, even going down to Northern South America, lots of rainfall in some spots. And there's also Philippe out there and then that tropical wave in the vicinity of the Cabo Verde Islands. And so let's quickly talk about what is happening for parts of the Caribbean and surrounding areas. And here we're zooming in to Northern South America and we can see all that shower and thunderstorm activity in parts of Central America, especially Panama, going to some spots in Colombia, Venezuela, and even in the Guyanas. But for most of the area, it is pretty dry and sunny. Nothing crazy happening some thunderstorms were near Trinidad earlier today but those are moving out and uh, maybe across some other islands off the eastern Caribbean there could be some passing showers here and there with nothing too crazy. Let's drift up to the north and here we can see that across the greater Antilles going to Cuba, Jamaica, parts of Hispaniola and Puerto Rico there is some thunderstorm activity so the daytime heat is contributing to all of what we're seeing right now. Same story as we head to portions of South Florida especially the Keys, the Bahamas, portions of the Bahamas and even the Turks in the Caicos Islands as well. And uh, even over into uh, other spots of Central America, Mexico, Guatemala, Belize, Honduras, we see some activity there as well. And maybe some passing showers across sections of the Virgin Islands heading into the Leeward Islands. Heading up to our tropical system right now, we've got Ophelia, which has made landfall earlier this morning, as I said. So it was a strong tropical storm. It was near hurricane status at the time of landfall. So it made landfall with peak winds, peak sustained winds of 70 miles per hour. And uh, it has been rapidly weakening since because it is cut off from its source of energy, which is those uh, very warm waters of the Atlantic. So without that, the system is rapidly losing strength, but nonetheless bringing those tropical storm conditions to sections of the eastern U.S. And uh, overall, we can see that impacts from the system extend as far as into portions of New England. Let's go on to the cone forecast for it. And here we can see this shaded mustard area that is representative of the extent of tropical storm force winds. And we can see that it is impacting portions of the states, going to sections of eastern North Carolina, Virginia, even for southeastern Pennsylvania, going to Maryland, Delaware, New Jersey. These areas are feeling impacts from the system. But the good news, it is rapidly weakening. And uh, there's that storm surge, the heavy rainfall, even some flooding in some spots. I have been seeing videos. So by tomorrow morning, it should become a post-tropical cyclone and then eventually make its way out of the U.S. So if you're being impacted by this, guys, please continue to stay safe and do not take any unnecessary risks. Let us go ahead and head out into the Atlantic. So here we are looking at the imagery of a newly formed Philippe as well as that next tropical wave. So Philippe isn't the most impressive right now. It was battling some unfavorable conditions, especially that wind shear, but it is likely to slowly strengthen over the coming days. And in the long term, it might manage to reach hurricane status, who knows, but it is likely going to be missing the Caribbean. That's highly likely at this point in time. So uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the cone forecast for the system and here we can see it so no watches or warnings in effect this is not expected to impact anyone over the course of the coming days so maximum sustained winds are 40 miles per hour just at that threshold for being considered as a tropical storm and it is making its way to the west at 14 miles per hour now up until tuesday this general westward to west northwestward motion should continue and then eventually with the, uh, a weakening in that high pressure system out there which steers our storms to the west we'll see it make that turn up to the north so that is why that turn is anticipated because of weakening in the high pressure system out there. So we have seen this trend. We've recently seen it with Nigel and now Philippe is going to be taking that on as well. So not going to be a problem for the Caribbean. Direct impacts are not expected.
And so let's go ahead and talk about that next tropical wave. So it is looking quite disheveled now. And as we look at the outlook from NHC as of 2 p.m., we can see that it is uh, just off the African coast to the southeast of the Cabo Verde Islands. And there's that 20% chance of seeing something become of it over the course of the coming days. Now, if it is going to get itself together and take advantage of any conducive conditions out there, we'll see the chance gradually increase once it is likely that, hey, we will definitely see this becoming our next name system. System. And by the way, the next name after Philippe is Rina, R-I-N-A, so Rina is the next name to be used, and uh, we'll eventually see what happens with this, but based on the shaded area here, it is likely going to be following in the footsteps of Philippe and making that turn up to the northwest, not being an issue for the Caribbean either. Now, this is good and bad news. Good news in the sense that, hey, there's not a strong tropical storm or long-term hurricane that is going to be hitting the Caribbean. That is the good news. The bad news is, with all these tropical waves moving, and by or most of these waves coming by and developing in the MDR, they turn up north. At this time of year, many islands depend on these tropical waves heading into the Caribbean and dumping some rainfall. This prevents droughts. At the same time, we know that a lot of rainfall can induce flooding, but we have been vacant of any substantial activity, especially in northeastern islands. So uh, water access has become an issue for many areas. And as such, uh, that is the bad news associated with all these systems staying out to sea and uh, substantial tropical waves not moving in with enough activity to uh, provide a well-needed relief from the rainfall. We recently saw a rainfall increase for parts of the Eastern Caribbean, but uh, unfortunately that was not the case for everywhere. So some areas are still pretty dry right now, undergoing or experiencing those drought conditions. And now we want to go ahead and move on and take a look at conditions out there. We'll be looking at this dry air map, and here we can see that it is pretty colorful in some areas. So as we head more toward the shade of orange and that red and even that pink shade, that is uh, areas of denser dry air, a lot more dry air found within those spots. There we have Philippe and uh, that dry air is ahead of it. So that will help to keep the intensity of it at a minimum and help to prevent any crazy intensification. So once this dry air infiltrates the system, once there's some dry air intrusion, that disrupts its structure. So this is something that it'll have to battle. It will be in survival mode for some time. Time. But as it relates to the model intensity guidance, let's go on to some model data very quickly. Here we can see that a couple of these models are expecting that it will become a hurricane. And I've noticed a trend of them kind of uh, saying that, hey, this won't become a major hurricane anymore because initially there were quite a bit of models expecting that it will manage to make it to major hurricane status. And most of them, well, all of them are now keeping it as a cat one at peak over the course of the coming days. So we'll see what happens. As I said, it will be in some sort of a survival mode as it battle some unfavorable conditions out there and so I'm here to keep you guys posted as per usual and that is pretty much what I wanted to share with you in this evening update and so I hope you found it to be quite informative but if you have any questions please do leave them in the comments as per usual I'll respond once I get the chance to do so and as always remember to be with the wise.